Okay, I'm a little excited. It's another one of those rare opportunities where I've been allowed to film at Car Boot Sale. Um, went to Terraberth or Hengoid Car Boot Sale again. I'm going to put the details of the Car Boot Sale in the description if anybody wants to go to the Car Boot Sale in South Wales. It's a cracking little boot sale. Um, and I bought some beautiful things again. Now, before I start, um, I arrived at seven o'clock in the morning and I was instantly met by a follower of my channel named Tess. And she came running up because she said to her and her dad were there and she said, I recognize that man, I know him. And she went scouring on YouTube and she found me. So I'm going to embarrass her and I'm going to put a picture of her up now. So that is Tess taking the photograph straight off my video um because i filmed on the day and tess is pregnant and due in september so i want to wish her and her partner ashley a massive massive good luck on the birth of their son now ashley apparently is a big follower of the channel so a massive shout out to you as well um, they come they come all the way up, up from Brighton, not see me, I must say, but uh, they come up for work uh, purposes. I didn't get to meet Ashley. I met Tess and her father, who were absolutely lovely. And I actually bought a few things off uh, her father. Um, so, yeah, all in all, absolutely fabulous. Lovely to meet her. Lovely. I spoke to Ashley for a couple of seconds on the phone. Unfortunately, the signal went, you know try uh, saying hello and asking him uh, why he wasn't down saying hello to me himself but um, yeah lovely lovely people and thank you very much for following and Tess thank you for saying hello and I honestly wish you good luck I got seven so I know how hard they are <laughs> okay so Today, you're going to get to see a little bit of cut up live at the car boot sale again and you're going to see some of the things I bought uh, so I'm not going to give you any spoilers. I'm going to um, stop now. I'm going to show you the video footage, and then we're going to talk about some of the things I purchased at the end. I hope you enjoy. Is the clock wait all on the bag, are they? Yeah. And how much is the clock? Two quid. I'll have that, please. Yeah. How much is the jewellery, please? Um, 50 pence for the brooches and a pound for the bracelet. Yeah. Thank you. But uh, uh, look through the box, love. How much are the silver ones? I probably can't use this for. Found one I won't find a pound for. Right. Now that one for three. And I got another silver one. Right. 
Can I have a look at them, please? Um, and I'll have a ghost tree as well, madam. Any other? It's in English bits. Uh, these are not silver. I don't think so, anyway. No, I don't know. These bags are silver. We can tent site one for those little ones. Hang on, more. It's just trying to get everything out and yes. trying to set it up, isn't it? That one's silver. That one's silver. Yeah. I got eye glass here to have a look now. I know, it's just I'm just gonna get rid of the jewelry box once I right. take everything out. You got an eye glass here somewhere, so have a look at these. Oh, There's some marks on the hearts. It looks like 500. I can't make it out. But the rings, not one of them are marked, unfortunately, so I can't do nothing with them. Okay. But thank you. You're Bob's yeah. nothing major, but. Is it?
Hang on. Bag of bits. What's there? Oh, five R. Okay, darling. That's fine. Yes, thank you. Yeah, a little Persian uh, coffee pot. Well, I was being more sarcastic with the little, but yeah. It's a folder pot. <laughs> Good way to earn all now. It must be weighted in the base. What are you asking on that? Uh, 60 quid. It is a big one, as the actual says the business. Is that a mammoth? Yeah, that's first series. Yeah, the base is left somewhere, isn't it? Is it there? Yeah, it's just one of those, not, not an old one. Yeah. Yeah, no, and it's no, it damaged. Is, yeah, I know that. Um, well, it's a muff. A lady's fur muff. It's really anti animal, isn't it? I'm selling all my ivory off today because uh, yeah, it's illegal in two weeks, soon. isn't it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, what do you want for those four, please? That stands me at 20, uh, 30 pounds. Uh, but yeah, but that's a two dollar. So that's 30, that's 30. So, yeah, that should be 10 or 15, but hang on. These two I've got flexibility on, those two I haven't. Right. Um, What's your engine, bud? That's 80. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, if it, I can do drop this a bit to make that much, so it's 65 for the whole lot. That could to be absolutely nothing. Actually, probably a minor loss, but yeah. I can't be a dealer because I only ever lose money. You see? <laughs> Thank God I don't do it for a living, eh? It's very hard, isn't it? It is hard. But the only thing about dealers that I've seen, not that I am one, is that they never stop trading because they deal amongst themselves. Yes. <laughs> it's a perpetuating optimistic circle. They always think there's going to be a profit in it. You'll probably have the knowledge. Anywhere good tomorrow? 
Sully. Amazing. Is it far? Right, it's down by Barry Island. Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll get you the postcode in no, a minute. Know, yeah, no, um, yeah. Spectacular. Is it okay? Yeah. It is absolutely spectacular. We'll be down there tomorrow. Or buying? Both. Okay. I'm only here today for the buy in, but uh, yeah, tomorrow, yeah, yeah, tomorrow yeah. is um, spectacular, Sully. Is it? Yeah. Well, you take those things down with you and sell them and then send me the money. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. It saves me dragging it all over the place, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I don't know. Technology's not my bag. It does pick up a bit. No, no, I'm too old. I'm pretty stubborn and old. Well, I'm standing and I still remember the game. Oh, I'm younger than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going for the record, are we? No, no. I think it's 1994, 1995 yeah. would be nice. Loads of technology. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And they can rebuild it, can't they? They're great. As long as they don't get any diseases, they can rebuild it. Are you interested in a bid? Well, I told you what they cost me gone. I, I don't like... I'll include the coffee pot as well. 100 quid. That stands me in at 30 quid. So you can work it out, can't you? So that comes to 90. 95, <laughs> actually. But... Uh, uh, Yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't care really. I mean, it's not a desperate need. I just want to get rid of. I've got yeah. a lot of stuff. So is it yes or no then? <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. What? what did you say? Ninety? Yeah. yeah right. No, and Andrew, they said. He said a hundred. Uh, no, no, ninety. Sorry. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Thank well, you. I'll go leave something room in it. See, that's William the Fourth. It's not any yeah. more valuable. It's nicer, yeah. isn't it? It's not being Victorian. These are good. These are good. It's, if you've got a shop. Which you, you don't know. You had a shop yeah. But these, this is someone put together these now. Normally, cuttings are useless, aren't they? Yeah. But with the um, platinum Duke Ghibli coming up, it's all her descent, her ancestors. Yeah. It's a little scrapbook. But what a lovely cover. And then this bit, look, I'm not in love with it. I just think I was impressed that someone had gone to all the trouble. But the interesting, the social bit of it is, these are the comments that were written by the press at that time. Right. So they're favourable comments. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. Because you know why, don't you? No. Because the Royal Family had power in those days, didn't they? Yeah, they don't anymore, that's my bloody sure. I think they're absolutely charming. Right, uh, Unlike me, of course. Don't um, you want to put it on your account? What, account? <laughs> ah, good boy, you want? I'll pay now. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'll pay now. I will still be back and see what else you pull out. Is there anything, where are you? Is there anything you want to take? Yep. Uh, we'll just exchange email addresses or something. You can take it and do something with it. You can make a discovery here. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. no. I don't know. Give me a Thank you. The, um, yeah, if there's anything you want to, because I want to clear it. Though. Yeah, no, so that's fine. if there's fine. anything you want to take, yeah. let me know. Okay. Thank you.
that one's steel, but I'm not sure if that one is white gold. It's not stamped, no, I know. Where's your magnet? My pocket. Two and a half, so thirty but forty two pounds there. Cost of five and that's forty two pounds there, that's silver. I think that one is diamond with nine carat, I think. You have to test him. Okay, so the first thing out of the box is I have to talk about the gold. You can see how many jewellery boxes I dive through and how quick I am looking through it. And that's because there's 100, 200 stalls, 300 stalls sometimes at a car boot sale. And almost every stall has jewellery. You don't have the time to literally spend five minutes going through one box. So you go through it all quick. You see what jumps out of you and you go on to the next one. If you have time to go back around again, then you go through it slowly. But... Um, I managed to pull out a little bit of gold. I pulled out, you saw me pull out that bag and sort through it, and it was like two and a half grams of gold in the bag. And there was one white metal ring set with 12 diamonds, which is gold, which I'm keeping for myself because it fits me. So I'm going to keep that one for myself and wear it. Um, and the other one was a Liverpool uh, football ring. Now, I paid a fiver for the big diamond gold ring and the two and a half grams of scrap and the liverpool ring but the liverpool ring is probably worth a fiver the two and a half grams of gold is worth about 40 pound and the other ring well it was quite a heavy ring and it's being kept so we'll forget that one that doesn't really count in the uh, thing so i paid a fiver so about seven dollars seven and a half dollars and there's about 45 return haven't even got to sell it i can just scrap it and of course the Liverpool ring. 
So the gold, always handy, it's a quick earner, and I always look for gold and silver. Now, I did mention um, Tess's dad, and he had a very, very interesting stall. He stalled out with a van full of antiques and collectibles. And he seemed, for all purposes, an extremely knowledgeable man, lovely man, lovely to chat to. Didn't care about his stuff, he would just wanted to sell it all. And he done me an exceptional deal. Now, I spent, I bought a vase, first of all, off Tess, which was this one, which is a beautiful Allen Bay uh, mottled purple Jack in the Pulpit glass vase. And this apparently was Ashley, so thank you very much. This one cost me a tenner, which is about $13 and a half, $14. And I rated about 25 online. Then I had a job lot of Ashley's dad, uh, Tess's dad, sorry. And this job lot owes me £90 sterling, which is about $130, give or take. So not fortunes, but not cheap. But it is for what I've had. Let's start off with one of my favourites. This was the first item I saw and you saw me looking at. Now this is a large, two foot tall, four kilo unpacked copper ewer or jug or, or coffee pot, whatever you want to call it, samovar. Call it whatever you want. There's, if you look them up online, there's a dozen different terms and names people use for these. They're Middle Eastern, Turkish. Um, this one is dovetail jointed, so it's, you know, it's an earlier one with the dovetail joints as opposed to a later one that's just seamed in a straight line. It's got its original patina. It's got this beautiful hammered out, very simple, elegant pattern. Love the shape. And I love this sort of swan or gooseneck spout on there. Really nice thing. And it is. It's 3,948 grams, just as you see it there. So that's four kilos just below. That's heavy. Feeling it in my arm. That is heavy. Four kilos in a coffee pot or samovar, whatever you want to call it. Age, it could be early 20th century, but I'm thinking it's probably late 19th century. Um, value, they're all over the place from sort of 50 pounds to like 500 pounds. Um, depending on decoration, attribution, everything. So it's a nice thing. So a bit more research needed. Um, but yeah, I think he very much looked after me. So that's the first. Then I had this in the job lot, which is a really nice, it's not that old. It might be 30 year old, 40 year old, uh, might be less, but it's a nice vintage brass. I don't know if you'd call it a shop bell or a hotel bell, but that's the sort of thing it's going to end up in. That's what it's for, you know, on a shop counter or hotel counter. <coughs> Customer come in, ring the bell, job done. And these are really collectible, sought after. You can get some really elaborate ones. It's a pretty standard, but it's a good size. It's double, triple the size that you get on the normal ones. So I'm really pleased with that. That's about 30 pounds, something like that. I had off him a modern Chinese cloisonne vase. Uh, cloisonne is they use wire to make the pattern and then fill it in and fire it. So it's like an enamel vase in a copper wire design. It's not that old, it's probably 1980s, I guess, 70s, 80s. Um, but it's a decorative piece and it is nonetheless Cloisonne. And Cloisonne is expensive uh, stuff. I then had a set of nesting cup weights in brass. A lot of people are selling these as bronze, but this looking at this, this is more brass than bronze. Um, now it has lost the little pin at the front. There would be a little nail type pin that would come out and you just hook that over. That's all it is. It would just be a stud. And this is a full set. And they would literally come out on the nesting cup weights because they would literally sit inside each other for transportation and storage. And there's a full set. Um, and again, they're like 40, 50 pounds, 60 pounds for a set. That was no problem at all. 
then we come to my favorite item that I purchased often, which is this. Now, I felt it was a bit older than he did. Um, he didn't think it had a huge age. However, I can look at the base in a minute. There's little indicators on there. If we look at the tail, look how rough the tail is. Um, and it's all carved in like straight lines. And then the tail, to make it look like a knot, is just cut at a funny angle. It isn't actually wrapped like through it. Um, the later ones are machined done and it looks almost like a knot. This is just cut lines. Um, it's well carved. You can see, to be honest with you, some chisel marks or carved marks, especially on the base. I suppose more on the base. It's a nice thing. It's jade. It's Chinese jade. It has seen better days. Um, three legs have detached from the base and the base is broken a bit on the corner and it has all been put back together with what looks like an early sort of bone glue. Then we look at the stand, which is inlaid. Now, the, your first thought is it's inlaid with brass, but that is white metal. I've had it under an eyeglass, and that looks to be inlaid with silver. It could be brass, could be wrong, but it looks to be inlaid with silver to me, not brass. So it's just a really pleasant little thing. I absolutely love it. And I mean, I love it. It's jade. Now, this, this mineral... If it's sort of 1950s, um, then it's from Taiwan uh, or that area, and this mineral is not mined anymore. It's protected. Um, if it's Chinese, it's early 20th century, um, or first half of the 20th century, and either way, I love it. It's six inches by six inches. It's a good size. Now, I looked online. There are comparables online. Um, there's one similar, very similar three-legged horse online, half the size at hundred and something dollars, and they've put these down as the 1950s. But it is hard stone jade. It is not soapstone, and I absolutely love it. I really do. Um, and I'm going to be putting a price on it that I hope it never sells, and it'll stay in my collection. But at least I can say it's up for sale. <laughs> it is absolutely spectacular. So I love it. So thank you very much. They are, uh, well, I must admit, I was extremely happy on the day. You also saw me purchase this. Now, you've probably seen over the last couple of videos that you've seen me pick Neo up for a fiver and put it back down. Certain figures I'll pay it for, others I won't. Now, why I paid it for this one is it was a bit more different than the normal, just plain white gloss figure. She's got a matte finish to her. She got a modelled finish on the dress. It's just a bit more, a bit more bower, a bit more elegant, a bit more work. I'd say she was a bit more dearer than the normal. She's still Neo by Ladro, Neo being the cheaper version of the two. But I still see her no problem at twenty pounds. Um, with the standard white girls, I'm I've seen so many of them. I just get fed up of buying them because they're slow to sell. That one I rated a bit, a bit higher. Um, what else was there? You saw me buy a West German cuckoo clock. It was a plastic version, you know, vintage plastic version, not a carved wooden one uh, for two pounds, but I sold that straight away. I was asked by someone if they could have that. So that went and never made a video. Um, and there was some few bits of silver and things like that. I think that were in the video, but I haven't, I haven't really mentioned those. Um, let me see if there's anything else. No, I think that was it. Oh, yeah, it was. Sorry. Two seconds. We'll get there now. First of all, there was this, which is a Joan Rivers uh, classic collection pearl or glass bead necklace. Joan Rivers being a name you want to look out for, pulls good money. So I had this. Beautiful thing. Now it's not going out cheap. I can tell you that now that's like £75. That's what that's going out for. 
Um, and before you, I'm not big on the designers. Um, I'll buy them if I see them, but then I would research the prices on eBay to know what they're selling for. Um, and that's the sort of money a good necklace like us pulling on eBay. So that's the price I'm putting it up for. Next, we had you saw me buy an agate brooch. If I can get it out of the bag, it, this agate brooch come with its original authenticity certificate. So it's agate mined in India. Um, weight five grams, or the average metal weight is five grams. Gemporia, excuse me, Gemporia is from. Um, I think this was a pound, I think, in the video. I can't quite remember. I'll have to have a look. Was it 50p or pounds, something like that? And we got the most beautiful blue agate brooch. They haven't put up for a lot, they put up for like 20 quid. We got a most beautiful blue agate designer brooch. Signed on the back again. Destello with a certificate. I don't think it's ever been out because I have to open the packet to photograph it and film it. Um, so what can I say? Original bag and orcs just wrote on the bag what it is. So, yeah, that was really cheap. I also had another brooch, but I don't know where to put it. I'll have to go in another video. So, yeah, there may be other things in there that I'm forgetting, but um, that's generally the gist of it, I think. And to be honest with you, I'm seriously excited. I love the horse. I love the copper you know, coffee pot. So, I don't know what you think. Absolutely fabulous. And I'm going to repeat what I've said. Ashley, thank you for following the channel. Tess, I wish you all the luck in the world. I hope the delivery and well, everything goes smooth. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.